A rocket lifted off into the skies of northwest China, and within two minutes, something went wrong. Landspace Zhuke 2 e once hailed as a breakthrough in methane-powered flight, and suddenly became the latest reminder of how unforgiving space technology can be. This wasn't just another test. It was a mission tied to investor confidence, future reusable rockets, and China's push for a competitive private space industry. The Zhuke 2 ey 3 rocket, built by Beijing-based Landspace, launched from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center on August 15, 2025. It was designed to demonstrate improvements over its earlier versions, particularly its upgraded engines and structural design aimed at higher efficiency. The rocket lifted off successfully, with video from observers showing it soaring into clear skies. But just shy of two minutes after liftoff, an anomaly occurred. The flight abruptly ended, with the mission declared a failure later that day. Landspace officially confirmed the problem more than eight hours after launch. In its statement, the company explained that the rocket experienced a flight anomaly, but stopped short of detailing what went wrong. The exact payloads on board were not disclosed, which is a common practice in China when launches do not succeed. The lack of detail left both analysts and the public wondering about the nature of the malfunction. What made this mission important is the track record leading up to it. The Zhuke 2 program had gained credibility through a series of successful flights. Its second launch in July 2023 became historic. Landspace rocket was the first methane-fueled launcher ever to reach orbit, placing the company ahead of much larger names such as SpaceX and Blue Origin, which were still preparing similar systems. Methane engines are considered the future of rocketry because they burn cleaner, allow for better engine reuse, and are cheaper compared to traditional hydrocarbon fuels. By the time of this failure, the Zhuke 2 series had already flown six times. Four of those were successful, and two, including this most recent attempt, failed. This placed land space in a delicate position. The earlier successes had built a reputation for progress and resilience. Now, this setback interrupts that momentum. What makes the issue even more critical is that the second stage of Zhuke 2 e used the TQ, 15A engine, a design directly linked to the TQ 15B engine plan for the company's next generation rocket, the Zhuke 3. For land space, this failure comes at a particularly sensitive time. The company isn't just a private startup, it is one of the most prominent names in China's emerging commercial launch sector. In July 2023, Landspace made global headlines when Zhuke 2 became the first methane-fueled rocket in history to reach orbit. This put them ahead of SpaceX and Blue Origin, both of which had been developing methane-powered systems but had yet to achieve orbital success. That accomplishment gave Landspace a valuable edge. Investors saw the company as a rising star capable of delivering on a technology considered essential for future spaceflight. In the following months, Landspace continued to build on that momentum. New versions of the Zhuke 2, including the 2E model, were launched, and several missions succeeded. This showed not just technical progress, but also consistency, a key factor when building client trust in a sector where reliability is everything. However, the Y3 flight changes the narrative. Each launch costs not only money, but also time and credibility. Failures are part of the space industry, but their timing can magnify the impact. In this case, Landspace has already filed preliminary paperwork to list on the Shanghai Stock Exchange's star market, potentially aiming for an IPO in early 2026. A successful run of flights leading up to that moment could have boosted investor confidence. Instead, this failure adds uncertainty. The technical side is equally high stakes. Landspace is simultaneously working on the Zhuke 3 rocket, a much larger vehicle designed to be reusable. This rocket uses Tian-K, 12A engines on the first stage, and the TQ, 15B engine on the second stage. That second stage engine is an evolution of the TQ, 15A used in the Zhuke 2 e If the Y3 failure is linked to an issue with the TQ, 15A, then engineers will need to examine whether similar problems could occur in the TQ, 15B. This could result in delays while the design is reassessed, tested, and validated. For land space, the stakes couldn't be higher. 
On one side is the promise of leading China's private space industry into the era of reusable rockets. On the other is the risk that technical issues and investor doubt could slow its rise. Landspace setback doesn't exist in isolation. It comes against the backdrop of China's larger space ambitions, which include both state-run programs and a fast-growing commercial sector. Just one day before the Zhukou-2E anomaly, China's Long March 5B rocket successfully delivered 10 satellites into orbit for the Guang Broadband Constellation. That program aims to deploy nearly 13,000 satellites in low Earth orbit to create a massive internet network, rivaling other systems. By 2027, China expects to have 400 Guang satellites in orbit, and the launch cadence is already accelerating. This contrast is striking. While the private sector grapples with challenges like land space failure, state-backed programs move forward with successful missions. The Long March 5B launch demonstrated not only technical reliability, but also the ability to integrate large-scale projects quickly. For clients and investors, this difference could be important. If private firms falter, customers may look more to state providers like CESC, China's state-owned aerospace corporation. At the same time, China's commercial space sector remains vibrant and highly competitive. Landspace is just one of several companies racing to develop reusable rockets. Space Pioneer, Galactic Energy, Orient Space, CAS Space, and Deep Blue Aerospace are all preparing new vehicles, many aiming for test flights before the end of the year. What makes this ecosystem dynamic is that successes and failures can quickly shift attention and investment. Landspace early methane success gave it an edge. Now, its failure provides opportunities for competitors to step into the spotlight. Space Pioneer's Tian Long, 3, Galactic Energy's Palace, 1, and Deep Blue's Nebula, 1 are among the rockets that could benefit from Landspace pause if they deliver on schedule. The bigger picture is that China is pushing both public and private sectors forward in parallel. The Guang constellation represents a strategic project of national scale, while companies like Landspace represent a bet on innovation and market-driven progress. Landspace failure is significant, but it does not erase the broader trend. China is aiming for more launches than ever, with 45 already attempted in 2025, putting the country on track to beat last year's record of 68 attempts. In other words, one company's setback may slow its path temporarily, but the wider pace of development continues to accelerate. For the audience, the lesson is clear. These moments of failure are part of a much larger story of rapid growth, experimentation, and competition in the global launch industry. Landspace failed juk 2 e-flight shows just how thin the line is between progress and setback in space exploration. One moment, a company leads the global race with methane-powered innovation. The next, it faces delays, scrutiny, and the challenge of rebuilding confidence. Yet these failures are not endings, they are turning points. Whether land space recovers quickly or yields ground to competitors, China's commercial space race is accelerating faster than ever. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.